We also have ABC 10's Brandon Riddiman live tonight from the State Emergency Management Center. And Brandon, you just spoke to the governor about these shutoffs. What did you learn? Yeah, so you had a press conference and, you know, we've been reporting on the governor's involvement with pg e for some time. We've confronted him about the more than $200,000 that was donated by pg e to help him win an election and pointed out that he took that money and hasn't said anything about giving it back while also talking tough on pg e But I have to say, the talk today was a different level than I've heard out of this governor. You heard some of it at the top of the show. He said this is not a climate change thing. This is squarely at the feet of pg e the governor said. He said it was their mismanagement and greed and uh, negligence of their system over the course of decades that led to the problems we're seeing right now, which is fascinating because I talked to a PG&E official earlier today and asked them about the fact that people aren't going to be reimbursed for refrigerators full of food. At least that's what PG&E has been telling us because they say it's a weather related event. And I pointed out, well, it's not specifically just weather. This also has to do with your equipment not being able to hold up to the weather California offers. I drilled down on that with the governor a little bit in the press conference. You know, do you feel like PG&E is taking its role in all of this seriously? And what would you say? Well, to they better. I mean, look, as it relates to compensating people that uh, have been impacted, uh, I believe they should be compensated and we will pursue that. Uh, they have not made a determination to my knowledge. They told uh, us they won't. They made that to you. They said something differently uh, to us. Uh, so that's to be determined. But I believe that people should be. And that's why I think they should uh, be very copious in terms of their note taking to make a determination of their impacts uh, because of the size and scope uh, and the time uh, associated with this. Yeah, so really interesting. pg e is saying, no, we're not going to cover that. And the governor says, yeah, keep your receipts, people. Um, so that's kind of an interesting little note. One other thing that was really fascinating out of this and something you don't hear often covering government, the state has been helping pg and &E run its business and respond to this crisis by doing things that are pg and &E's job. For instance, this week we are told, and the uh, Office of Emergency Management uh, here confirmed to me, they helped the state IT, the state IT people helped pg and &E get the website back up and running. They actually offered them support from the state to do that, even though it's not the state's job. They also made an offer to help state employees come in and staff call centers for pg and &E. That hasn't actually happened, I am told, just yet. They've also offered some help uh, with inspecting the lines. If there's any state assets that can go out and fly the lines to help pg and &E be sure it's safe to turn the power back on and get the juice flowing a little bit sooner. Again, that is not something that's actually been solidified, but we are told the state has also been helping pg and &E with security. Um, we did have an incident, unfortunately, where a pg and &E, uh, truck uh, had uh, gunshots fired at it earlier this week and uh, the state has definitely taken notice of that and is trying to make sure that the people who are out there on that line level trying to make sure the power is going to work can do their job safely.